everybody, I'm Melinda Gallon, and we've got a great show today with two very important people from Cape Cod to discuss the firing range at the base. Lots of great information. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, oh I'm delighted to be here today to talk about a subject that's really pretty serious for us folks that live in the Upper Cape and actually all over Cape Cod. I am, we're going to talk a little bit about today about the base and about the firing range and everybody has an opinion and what we're going to get here is some really good information and I have two of the best people to talk about this information and give us some facts. One is Mark Forrest. Welcome, Mark. And Mark is a county commissioner, a Yarmouth selectman. He worked with studs. He was uh, chief of staff for Delahunt. He's worked on conservation projects all over the Cape. Uh, he's very knowledgeable. And the other person is our own, bless our hearts, David Sampson, our renowned selectman. And David, welcome. We're glad to have Great you here as person. well. Nice to see you in person, not on, on a screen somewhere. It's great to be in the studio. So here we go. Let's talk, let's talk base. Um, Mark, could you give me a little bit of history um, about the base? I, I think you've, you've spent a lot of time there in, in many, many years, and, yes. and you've been here on the Cape. Is, um, it, I know it was a super fun cleanup site at one yes. point. Uh, it's not cleaned up, is that correct? That's correct. There's still cleanup work that is going on I out see. of the installation. Um, I first started working on uh, base issues and base projects back in 1985 when I joined the staff of Congressman Studs. And at the time, we were dealing with master planning, mm -hmm. what new projects uh, could be undertaken by the Air National Guard and the Army National Guard. Uh, we were also dealing with um, the early stages of a cleanup. Uh, some of the towns were experiencing groundwater contamination that they suspected was emanating from pollution on the base. And so they were looking for help from the congressional delegation to get the federal government to step, step up and take mm -hmm. some responsibility uh, for some of the cleanup work and to find ways to replace some of the supplies that were being lost. Mashpee was losing water supplies as well, along with uh, Falmouth, those were the two first towns that we started working with. Um, but all of the towns on the Upper Cape have been impacted in some way from pollution out there. The good thing is, is that um, while I was with Studs, we were able to create a national program to clean up military bases. We made sure that this installation was number one on the list. Mm -hmm. So there's never really, in recent years, been an issue with the funding for the cleanup. And uh, I've also been involved in some of the master planning that uh, it, it, to, deriving, trying to derive a consensus vision for mm -hmm. the future of the base. And then I've been involved in the establishment of a reserve, conservation land, um, to protect uh, our water supplies and um, other natural resources on the installation. So I've had a little bit of history here. This proposal of a machine gun range has sort of, sort of brought a lot of interest in not just the range itself right. and where it's going to be and what some of the impacts might be, but why, why was this land converted to conservation land? Um, if a machine gun range is being placed on conservation land, how does that happen? Aren't there restrictions? So I've been asked to speak to a number of groups to sort of give some background on how this area became conservation land. Sure. Um, <clears throat> when we first moved here, and, and my audience knows that we moved here from Ohio about mm -hmm. 41 years ago, 42 years ago, and um, one thing that was drilled into our heads and to my kids' heads was um, it's a sole source aquifer. Right. And boy, once that water goes, good luck. <laughs> right. You know, it's right. a serious issue. So anything that would contaminate the water would be a serious issue for right. sure. Um, so my understanding is, and, and you are, would know more about it than I would, um, is that the the, the machine gun range is actually going in a conservation area that is part of our sole source aquifer area right. and where we get some of our water. Well, what I've done for the purposes of our discussion is uh -huh. I brought with me some slides. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'd like the first one that I'd like to get up on the screen is the one that actually shows a cross section mm -hmm. of the aquifer and actually shows 
um, a schematic showing a, a multitude of area pockets of water. Mm -hmm. Yes, we call it a sole source aquifer, mm -hmm. and that's a designation from the Environmental Protection Agency right. because it's it, it's me, it's intended to mean that the drinking water we get is principally from groundwater, mm -hmm. and that that is that is our sole source principally yeah. for mm -hmm. the people of Cape Cod. So on this draw on the maps that I've that we've got on the screen. You'll see a, up in Provincetown, there's called a pilgrim lens. That's one of the lenses or mm -hmm. one of the portions of the aquifer. There's a Pamet lens, a Nosset lens, a Monomoy lens. And then on the upper cape, you'll see this very large lens called the Sagamore lens. And as you can see, the Sagamore lens is the largest drinking water lens or underground reservoir of water. Mm -hmm. It supplies drinking water for the four upper Cape Towns. Mm -hmm. So Bourne, Sandwich, Mashpee, and Falmouth. It also d feeds into Barnstable and Yarmouth. Mm -hmm. So for all of the communities west of Bass River, mm -hmm. the, the health of the Sagamore lens is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And because the lens works in a certain way, it also helps us better understand why the groundwater contamination problems at the base have been so impactful on the towns. So let me just move on to the next slide real quick mm -hmm. to show you uh, the um, the actual st makeup of the Sagamore lens, and this is uh, the green area. You'll see just how vast this 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 mm -hmm. this underground was reservoir is. Um, for years, it's been called our underground Quabbin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's sort of it's, it's a, so like it's a, such a large source of water. That we're talking about billions of gallons of water, mm -hmm. largely coming from rainwater, and then it flows out from the, the area that we now call the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve, from the, 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 the highest elevations, and it flows out to the surrounding towns. So it's important to understand that, yes, we call it a single source aquifer. That's a federal designation, meaning that federal agencies need to do everything that they can to protect this area. But in reality, it's a multitude of lenses. Mm -hmm. And here in Sandwich, you actually are you're on top of one of the most largest underground reservoirs of water, and which is the principal source of water here on mm -hmm. the Upper Cape. Wow, that's amazing. David, I have to ask you, now you're a selectman here in town. Um, how are you thinking about all of this? What, what, are, what, is, your, what is your feeling about having the, the firing range and where it's going to be located, yeah. etc.? So I think the challenge for me is that I just don't feel like I have enough information mm -hmm. to really take an active position mm -hmm. in either direction. But instinctively, especially based on history, the natural position is to be very concerned about this. Sure. Um, there's a test well 175 feet from my bedroom, for example. Oh, from your home? Um, for, oh, yes, from okay. where I sleep. Yes. Um, and it's, it's, that area is cleaned up now and it's no longer active, but we know what the consequences are okay. from what happened in the past. Sure. Now, we also know that there's been a lot of very good things that have happened as a result of that. There's been a lot of proactive sure. um, environmental initiatives, a lot of oversight. All of these great things mm -hmm. have happened. However, that does not diminish my concern about this particular issue, and it especially does not diminish my concern Considering what I, what I see as a lack of transparency to me as a selectman as far as what the plans are and what's going on. I see. Uh, and I, I think there's been some misrepresentations about information that's been distributed to uh, mm -hmm. my board, mm -hmm. to be candid. And um, I'm, I'm just kind of concerned about where information is coming from. I understand this has been in the works for a period of time. However, it's been in the public view for a short period of time. Very short. And it's all happening very quickly. Mm -hmm. So uh, my position of not really being in favor of this at the moment, because I don't, that, that's the natural choice for me, right? I don't have the right information to, to steer myself right. otherwise. Right. It's not a uh, partisan position or a political right. position. That's no, not really how I roll. Yeah. Uh, it's not anti-military. <clears throat> but as a resident of Sandwich, and, and every resident of Sandwich should be looking at this from a balanced approach and saying, okay, what are the potential impacts from this project on our community? Right. It's not about any of those other things that I just mentioned. It's actually what the real mm -hmm. life consequences may be. And the history, and I'm really glad that Mark is here today because he has firsthand experience with sure these does. things. <laughs> and I've talked to a lot of folks about this over the last uh, couple of weeks before mm -hmm. I started speaking about this publicly. Uh, all these other folks represent that same history about master planning and, and what was intended. Mm -hmm. So 
are we taking advantage of an opportunity here that time has passed and maybe people have forgotten? It kind of looks that way a little bit mm -hmm. to me, well, to but it doesn't. Advantage. That's the question. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't discount the importance of weighing all of these issues, mm -hmm. and having the right information given out to the public at large, mm -hmm. having true interactive sessions. COVID is a great excuse for some things, but it doesn't count on this one. <laughs> no. Um, but we have a ways to go before somebody could really feel comfortable supporting this, in my opinion, and, and that's why I recently brought this before the, the Board of Selectmen right. for formal right. discussion. Well, and it, and it is online, if they go to SCTV mm -hmm. and to the YouTube channel, wherever, and there's even a clip of it that has been all over of the discussion uh, about the base. Um, so, Mark, so there, the, the range is going to use 1930s machine guns. Um, I think they are M, M15, M, M15s or something like that, I guess that's okay. M, I guess that's what they, that's what I read anyway. Uh, <clears throat> the National Guard does have information up on their website. Mm -hmm. um, of all the places in all the world <laughs> to put a, uh, a machine gun range, mm -hmm. Why would you want to put it on top of a con of conservation land in the middle that has a, an aquifer on it? Well, let me explain, let me just give you a little bit of background on okay, how, that would help. how it became conservation. Land. Okay, that would be good. Um, in 1997, after Congressman Bill Delahunt was elected, mm -hmm. um, he was very concerned about uh, the military, the Pentagon closing military installations mm -hmm. around the country, and so one of the things that he had worked out with then Governor Bill Weld was an agreement that we'd work together to arrive at a consensus vision for the future of the base. Because back when he was elected, back in many years ago, um, <laughs> yeah. was he, I think he was still in college or something. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, or in high school. <laughs> or in high school, <laughs> even. Um, but back then, there was a real concern about all the divisions and controversy. Because by then, we really hadn't known much about the pollution problems. And right. We just knew that it was they weren't getting dealt with quickly. So Delahunt brought the governor involved into this, and we all agreed that we'd work on a consensus master plan. The county was involved, the Cape Cod Commission uh, did all the staff work, uh, working with the military. Um, we created a community working group of key stakeholders, wow. representing the towns, mm -hmm. the military, uh, civic groups, conservation groups, pro-military groups, uh, those on the other side. We right. really wanted to get a real good cross-section of the community mm -hmm. at the table mm -hmm. And for quite some time, uh, we spent uh, months, I, I attended many of the meetings myself because I was on the staff of the congressman, and we wanted at the end of the day to have that consensus because one of the things that we've learned is, is that if a community isn't together mm -hmm. in terms of its support mm -hmm. for its military installation that may be right there in its backyard, then it's very difficult to save that installation. Mm -hmm. And as you know and as folks in Sandwich know, uh, we've got a number of very, very important uh, military functions on the base. Mm -hmm. uh, the Coast Guard has an air station there. They have other units there as well involving uh, life-saving activities right. that are critically important, so they have a major presence there. The Air National Guard for years had a presence of jets there because of the location of the installation. Right. And we've had other Army Guard training uh, installations right. out there. Right. So the goal of the master plan was to look at what we're doing and find ways to make it compatible with what we're learning about the environmental resource. So during this master planning process in the late 90s, uh, we learned that the base, this base property, the, particularly the northern 15,000 acres, provided some of the most significant ecological habitat in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And these were from biologists brought in by the state, right. their own biologists saying, right. hey, listen, this is a significant area for the protection of all sorts of threatened and endangered species sure. and its important habitat. And also the Sagamore lens provides water to all these rivers and streams. It provides water to cranberry bogs surrounding mm -hmm. uh, in each of the communities. Mm -hmm. So the water beneath this, this huge stretch of land was an incredible resource, not just for water supply, but for a host of other things that were very valuable sure, from the point. Sure. So the master plan basically at the end of it came up with a series of recommendations. And one of them was that it, the northern 15,000 acres of the installation should be protected for habitat and for water supply purposes. 
And what we were learning right around the time the study came out is that we were continuing to have more pollution problems and we were now in a situation where future water supply sites uh, were, were becoming scarce in the surrounding towns and we needed to find areas on the base where we might have a chance of finding some clean drinking water. Sure. And sure enough, we there found was. that there were areas on the northern part of the base hmm. that would be crucial for, to meet the needs of the towns, particularly if, if they're losing water mm -hmm. supply sites from mm -hmm. contamination. So we knew with future growth and the needs of the towns that the water supply resources were critical to protect. And so the recommendation was made to turn the northern 15,000 acres into conservation land and to basically steer most of the training and military activity to the southern end of the base. Right. The master plan, the stakeholders, all agreed that we needed an installation, we needed the tenants, we needed the Coast Guard. This was not an anti-military thing. It was all about designing the uses in a way that fit the very unique and special environmental constraints uh, on the installation. And Delahunt's hope was that on the southern end of the base, the 5,000 right. acres there, we could actually add some missions. Delahunt proposed a fairly expansive Homeland Security Center when he was congressman. He mm -hmm. proposed other missions. He ta he's talked to the Coast Guard before he left office mm -hmm. about standing up some other activities there mm -hmm. because in order for the base to work, you need a critical mass of missions in order to keep, you know, oh, pave sure. the roads, sure. uh, keep the gates open, sure. Sure. pay for the sure. water sure. and sewer and everything else. Well, is this the 19, was this a, a, a 1998 agreement? This is a 1998 report and what came out of that was legislation. I see. To create what is called the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve, the northern portion of the installation. I see. And I've got it in green and one yes. of my, 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 my maps that you can put yeah. up on the screen. Yeah. Um, that northern part of the base was turned into conservation land. And that's something that you had just handed out. That I selected. Right, meeting. so it was that 1998 report that I carried to the selectments meeting on right. June 17th, which has some strategic highlighting in it that really kind of applies to this item right. about those 15,000 right. acres, about the fact that it's conservation land, about right. what it was purposed, and also about the process of how they got to where they were, who was involved, and who would need to be involved regarding changes. Maybe, right. Um, well, I, I sat on the board of the Cape Cod Chamber for many years, um, and I know Wendy really well. She's a dear and she friend. Was at, she was she's, at, she's, she's all a part meeting. of all those yes. things. I know she was way back when. That was before I was on the board. Um, and what I, I guess what was so shocking to me is I've always thought that Sandwich, the surrounding towns, Sandwich, Mashby, and Falmouth, had been good neighbors to a certain extent to the base, to the staff people, the people who work there, yeah. and they, they live in the community. Their kids sometimes went to school in the community. Um, it was very uh, egalitarian. Everybody welcomed them. Uh, there are civilians that work on the base, so that's important. I think, the, I think what brought this to wherever, whatever frenzy we are at currently is the fact that the whoever he was, um, the general, eh, whatever he was, because I'm not very good at that stuff, um, sent the letter, the letter uh, to the Cape Cod Chamber when they had said they had concerns about this firing range and said, well, we just won't um, have it let our people off base when they come here and blah, 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 and was rather threatening. Now, I, my understanding is he's been relieved of duty from this space or, or taken out of the PR situation, I hope. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what's, I think that's what's um, got people riled up. Um, it should be a cooperation, you know. Well, I think David made this point earlier about mm -hmm. the importance of communication, yeah. the importance of providing information. Yeah. Um, when we were well underway in the cleanup, you know, years ago, uh -huh. we were really, when it got really ramped up, one of the things that we did was we met regularly. When I say we, I'm saying yeah, collectively, yeah, yeah, yeah. military regulators at the state and federal level. Mm -hmm. In addition to selectmen, yeah. we had a senior management board comprised of selectmen of the surrounding towns. That board would meet monthly. I mean, the level of communication up until maybe the past five years was outstanding. Um, regular meetings, regular briefings, regular updates, a lot of collaborative discussions. Um, but that none of that was really evident in, in this particular project. And right. I think the concerns that uh, David has raised are very valid ones. Um, it, it actually sort of is mindful of 
years ago when there was so much controversy because the communication was, wasn't that good. Right. Um, and so I, I, I tip my hat to uh, the military during the, 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 the late 1990s, 2000s, up until maybe the past five years, the level of communication and the interaction with the towns has been outstanding, and, but it's dropped off significantly. And uh, this project really, even though they had been talking about it for a while, no one really knew, no one really understood. There was no real collaboration at all with any of the surrounding towns. And I think many of the town officials that are familiar with how we got to where we are sure. would have certainly raised these questions mm -hmm. in the very beginning. The machine gun range was taken off the table and taken out of the master planning process back in the late 90s. Governor right. Salucci at the time basically said, no, we're not going to be doing this kind of project because it's incompatible with where we're headed in terms of a new master plan and a new vision for the base. So you had uh, Governor Salucci, you had uh, people in his administration, right. uh, his governor, then Governor Swift when she stepped right. in. Right. Uh, she pretty much took the same attitude and as well as the congressional delegation. So we pretty much appreciated the fact that the state, because it's state land, Mm -hmm. was going to make sure that that land would be protected mm -hmm. as it should and as was recommended by representatives of this master planning group, this critically important stakeholder group. So to backslide on that now, to go back on that, I think has really uh, upset a lot of people. Oh, I think that, it has too. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, a kind, I, of, kind of interesting too with some of the things we're talking about, about these advisory boards and, and things like that. So as a selectman, uh, we we appoint individuals to all sorts of positions, and we mm -hmm. take on appointed positions ourselves. Like sure. I'm a cemetery commissioner, for example, <laughs> um, and what you a know, fun job. Uh, it, we make some fun decisions actually, sure uh, preserving do. the history of our cemeteries. It's probably a right. separate show, but um, <laughs> you know, one of the areas where I've always taken on is to be the selectman's liaison to the MMR. I think it's a senior management board or senior oversight board mm -hmm. or something like that. So mm -hmm. having been a selectman for five years and actually just before I came here with the new fiscal year starting, my certificate was in my mailbox of my reappointment to that role. Oh. And do you know how many times I've met with that board in my five years as a selectman? Oh, I don't know, 20. Zero. <laughs> That's what Never. I knew you were going to say. Never. <laughs> um, and I think that it might actually speak right to what we're talking about right. as far as some of these things that existed just kind of went by the wayside. Right. Because they um, didn't... Somebody didn't think it was important enough, or well, it was important at the time, but it became less important over time. Yeah, that's right, true. right, right, yeah, right. Um, well, I guess the problem is, there's, as as I mentioned earlier before we started, uh, before the camera started, uh, there's been no public forums. There's been, there's been, hey, sandwich, Mashby, Falmouth, you know, born. Um, we're going to put on. We're going to do a firing range on this in this conservation land, and we're going to clear cut. I don't know how many. One hundred seventy at least. Acres, yeah, acres. Yeah, maybe more. Uh, and displace the flora and fauna there, and everything right. else that's there. Um, and it's all going to be great. And it's going to be fun, and right. and you're going to be saving America, which is always you know everybody wraps themselves in in that flag, and that's fine. I have no problems with the military at all. I, I have brother a brother who served and a father who served. Um, however, that said, it would seem to me it's almost as if they were trying to sneak this in, and I'm sorry I'm using that term, but it's the only one that comes to mind to me, is they were trying to be sneaky about it. And why? Because they knew they had the 1998 agreement. Well, there was a 1998 master plan, but yeah. there was also the law establishing the Upper Cape Water Supply <laughs> Reserve. It was signed in the law in 2002. There you I go. was there. I was involved in drafting it right. and putting it together and organizing it, and I was there at the signing ceremony. And it says very clearly in the legislative language that uh, the Environmental Management Commission, the board that oversees it, is to provide for the permanent protection of the wildlife habitat and the water supply resources here on this land. I see. Right? So where do we go from here then? Well, I don't believe that what's being proposed is consistent with the law. Right. And well, it I doesn't sound like it for no. sure. No. No, I don't, I don't believe so. I, like I said, Governor Salucci made that call for us back in 1998, right. but somehow this issue has popped up again uh, for whatever reason. And as you said, that there really has been almost no public discussion about it or None. public awareness of it. No. And so now we have it. So the next step really in this thing is for the Environmental Management Commission to make a ruling as to whether or not this is something that they would deem compatible uh, with, the, with, with, with the reserve and is consistent with the law. And it's a pretty high standard that has to be met, and I, I don't believe they can, they've met it. 
but my question is, who goes to the commission and says, we need a ruling on this? The proponents of the project will be making, a, they, they need to get their permission to do this. They and need to. They need to do this. So this isn't going So what if they don't? Then the commission can shut them down. Okay. All right. That's what I was trying to get They have the legal power under the act establishing the I reserve I to see. essentially stop what they're doing. I see. They're in charge. They're the supervisors. I see. They control the land. It's conservation land. All right. So as a selectman, Dave, how can you, I mean, I know you you want to look at all sides of it, and I understand mm -hmm. that. That's And that's a good thing. That's, that's what that's, I try to do. You know, that's right. Fair, and that's right? the way that's fair and, fair and balanced. Um, but how do you proceed now? So we have, uh, via the town manager, has reached out to the base around doing an actual community forum, potentially at the high school auditorium. Excellent. Be like a two-hour presentation, meeting, interactive. And nobody should bring um, pitchforks This has not or, been, this is far know. from in stone at this point, <laughs> right? right? But um, hopefully we have that opportunity right. to do that. I think Mark's brought some really good concerns just around the legalities of, of how this moves forward. Sure. Um, but we have a ways to go here. You know, I, I my general impression is that are, they're trying to get this committed as soon as possible. Well, that's what I. But sure this is a very like local issue for the residents of Sandwich, Bourne, Falmouth, and Mashpee. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's great that I see legislators from around the Commonwealth saying that this needs to get done. But guess what? They don't live here. No. Um, and we are the ones who are going to be most impacted by mm -hmm. any fallout from this. Mm -hmm. We can't see the future. We don't have a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. And to have us support this as a community, especially given that it's potentially or, or definitely overriding uh, legalities that were put in place previously, right. it's going to take a lot of effort. There's big political challenges here. Mm. Um, you know, we support the military. I think our community has been a tremendous partner with oh, the installation I do I do for, for tens of years without question. Right. Um, but this is, this is a big one and the communication hasn't been there. Um, it's kind of a one-way street and we see things like the email that you mentioned come out with no retraction or apology, by the oh, way. Oh, no, the... Uh, I called Wendy personally and, and the asked Coast her. Guard, the Coast Guard sent, not a retraction, but uh, it was poorly stated or something, made a I, statement. I haven't yeah. seen anything that was, was meaningful to me. How about yeah. that? So, <laughs> it wasn't meaningful to me Who either. works for who here? What's going right. on, right? Well, I, my comment was, who in the heck do they think they are? <laughs> it, it's just inappropriate, you know? right? Right. No threats. Right, right. And that's what it was. Yeah, it was a threat for sure. Participate or suffer. Yeah, right. So in everything that you have, you know, you've shown us um, the, mm. the slide with the, the where it is and, mm -hmm. and all of that, um, the impact something like that would have, even the, the clear cutting of only, there's 15,000 acres, but 170 acres would make a significant impact on that lens. Is that correct? Well, if the legal obligation of the Environmental Management Commission is to permanently protect the habitat, how do you permanently protect the habitat while you, clear cutting I, it. I don't um, know. We also have this tendency to just ignore uh, climate change considerations. Right. Um, there is a group that's very active on the Cape and that's urging not just these folks but others around the Cape mm -hmm. to keep that in mind when you're making big decisions. Right. Um, you know, in, in, in my neck of the woods, uh, the, the Hyannis Airport's looking at a major expansion. Um, you know, what's the impact of that on our communities? What's the impact right. of that in terms of climate right. change? We need to be thinking differently about how we evaluate right. these projects. I would make the argument that if the Guard is interested in making changes in terms of the vision for the future, let's get all the key players, let's, let's do an update on that sure. 1998 blueprint. Right. Uh, let's do an update, get everybody at the table, let's right. have these conversations again. And let's look at whether or not there's a need to revise the master plan and make changes. Um, I think people are very proud of that plan, very proud of that document. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the legislature used it to create the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve, which right. requires some significant protections. Now, at the time, uh, the law was signed. This was back in 2002. We actually had conversations about what's compatible. Now, back then, uh, no one was suggesting we bring back the military, the, uh, the machine gun range project. <laughs> it was all talking about how yeah. to do maneuvers and how to navigate right. Uh, right. Uh, in a very uh, careful way right. in this area, which right. is so significant. Right, right. Well, um, and you're right about climate change. Um, it's not something that people uh, readily think about unless you're in a place like Sandwich, which is um, 
had a lot of sand added to it uh, over time for lots of reasons. Uh, I sat in a meeting with uh, somebody who had worked for the Corps of Engineers while in college many, many years ago when they put in the, um, oh gosh, what are those things called that go out in the ocean? The jetties. The jetties. And he said, a Corps of Engineer at that time, engineer said, oh, this is going to be bad for sandwich because it's going to, the sand is going to go away. Um, and I think we need, I mean, now is the time. I think we're, we're, um, we're in the new millennium. You would think we would start thinking forward thinking as opposed we have to. to. Uh, because they're going to be standing in water in, in Provincetown. There's no doubt about that in, in 50 years. Well, I'm worried about the base itself, its yeah. future, because yeah. we need to sustain it, but we, we do. need to do it in a way that everybody can agree on. We right. have a plan. We have a vision. Right. We need to stick with that. If we're going to make changes of any significance, we need to bring everybody back to the table again yes. and have those kinds of discussions. We cannot ignore the towns. We cannot ignore municipal leaders, other leaders of other groups. We need to sort of get that conversation going again, because if we don't, mm. um, it, I, I'm not overly optimistic about our, our ability to hang on to this, this, uh, this installation. Well, uh, because it's critical to have that community support sure, and community sure. interaction. Sure, you're a county commissioner though, can, so are you someone that can say, we need to bring these people together, or who brings them together? Um, I, we, we'll be making a statement at mm -hmm. some point relatively sure. soon as we get closer to the decision date by mm -hmm. the commission, but I think many of the, the, my other two colleagues have been pretty open about our concerns, mm -hmm. um, and we're doing a, a legal review because we believe that, like I said before, that legally, I'm not quite sure uh, that uh, we're checking all the right boxes here. Right, I see. And there's a lot of levels of government here, which makes this very challenging and complicated. Sure. But based on the fact that we're sitting here having this discussion, <laughs> That tells us where we're at, right. and it's also kind of prescriptive about what we need to be doing. Sure, because sure. we would probably prefer to be working in a more cooperative manner and avoiding these conversations. Sure, they're important to get the right information out and the facts out, but right. um, you know, finding the best opportunities for the process and working with the public directly, local leaders, all the folks that Mark mentioned directly, is going to lead to better outcomes for everyone. Well, I know Sue, um, Susan Moran, who's a, a state rep. Uh, issued a statement mm -hmm. recently and, and uh, a couple of days ago, I believe, and um, asked that it be halted immediately until it's investigated and how it came about and what's going on. So. Yeah, and she's a former selectman as well. And, and she's a, a former, former selectman. Uh, member of the Assembly of Delegates. Right, right. So mm -hmm. um, I, I just think there's so much concern about it. And um, Mark, I want to thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I think you gave us a lot of, you gave us history, but you also, I don't think people understand about the whole sole source aquifer. Um, I think we talk about it a lot, do. but, but I, I don't. don't. I don't think they, I, I mean, I'd never heard the term lens used before. Yeah. And I've been in some conservation meetings, so. Well, sometimes we don't, we don't realize that when we draw water for a municipal well mm -hmm. or a series of wells, mm -hmm. that there's actually, it draws water from a fairly large land area. Right. And what we've learned over the years is that from Sandwich mm -hmm. and in Falmouth and in Mashpee, but particularly in Sandwich, the it's water draws in water from the land up in what I call the Upper Cape Water Supply Reserve, right. which was formerly, you know, Army Guard training land. Right. And uh, right. so um, this has been an education process for us all ever right. since the first days of the cleanup. Sure. sure. And uh, what we've sure. learned is that it's an incredibly precious and valuable resource it is. that we need to protect. It is. For it is. Generations to come. Well, and I'm glad you're here talking about it, and I'm hoping that you will continue to help protect it uh, as we'll, a conservationist. We'll work with our fellow local officials and do everything yeah. that we can to make sure the interests Excellent. of the people Excellent. of Cape Cod are. And da Dave, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, you, uh, it's kinda, you're in a kind of a tough position, I think, because you know, I know that part of the, the Board of Selectmen think it's okay, and part of the Selectmen think, wait a minute, stop, let's, let's learn more about it. So um, I do appreciate you uh, of course. coming I'm out I'm just asking morning. people to look at the information we have and look at where it's coming from and validate it to make sure that we're right. sticking to the facts. Excellent, that's always good, that's always good. So thank you again, I really appreciate it. Mark Forrest, David Sampson. I am so thrilled to have had them on my show today. They were terrific. They have lots of information, and we're going to be showing this and other, giving you other information all about the firing range on the base so you can make up your own mind. That's what's most important. So if you have an opinion, let somebody know. Let the selectmen know. 
always very important. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations. <music>